Alrighty then, so it's the Noel's Bard Witchcraft Podcast. Chris is giving me the usual weirdo creeps out look. Because you're a creep. I guess it's time I guess it's time to begin and talk about what are we talking about this week, Chris? I can't remember. Oh, seventh dimension or living. That's right. So in classic Liam style, let's set Chris up. <laughs> What is seven dimension living? Do you know what? I'm going to start with the first bleep. F*** you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. So we've named the podcast Seventh Dimension Living. It's been in the podcast document for ages. All I'm simply doing is saying, can you give us some information on what might be in this podcast, what it might be about, and you've just basically sworn at me. Do you think that's a nice way to behave? I mean, what have I done? Well, you've just been you, haven't you? So, that's the problem. Right. You is you. Anyway. Isn't that like racist or no. some Racist against, <laughs> a bit against, against Liam's. You're a prejudice. What? You're a prejudice. Oh, boy karaoke goers. You don't like me for me, oh. and that's bad. And you ought to be, you ought to be arrested or some Okay. Right? Because my feelings, my feelings are hurt oh. now. And much like I knew, I know from the last lawsuit I was in, <laughs> it's not about what you <laughs> meant to say. It's about how those words were interpreted, <laughs> which I still can't get right. I still really don't understand mm. that. If I say something and there's no malicious intent behind it whatsoever, and yet they're offended just because they're offended at fucking everything. Yeah. okay then I don't know. Anyway, Seventh Dimension okay. Living, that's the name of this podcast. How did we arrive at that okay. kind of uh, a name? What, 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 spill the beans on what this is all about. So, is this, is this one the Hitch, Hitch, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Infinite? Is that what this one's called? Yeah, okay. that's it. Yeah, that's um, it. Hashtag Seventh Dimension Living. I think that might be the, the tag that okay. goes with it. So, yeah, so the idea was looking at what um, human life or magic would be from the perspective of higher spirits. And by higher spirits, I don't mean those stupid angels. Oh, I thought you meant as spirits that were on the weeds. Oh, no, 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 not those kind of weeds. No. No? Right, okay. Do you think spirits can get high? Those, if you absorb enough universes, I guess. Not speaking from personal experience, I might add. (laughs) Hashtag not sharing. Yeah, okay. So, basically, we are aware, or we should be aware, if we're listening to this podcast, we're probably humans, and we're aware of what it's like being in a physical reality, what it feels like being in a meat suit human body and what a three-dimensional living's about right but what about our spirits because the spirits they don't necessarily live in the physical plane in the physical universe do they so they view things very differently i mean do spirits even have eyes chris because they don't really have bodies do they they're just kind of there there's some sort of etheric kind of energy yeah it depends what you call eyes. If you mean physical eyes, then no. The answer is quite simple. But if you're actually meaning, do they see, that's different. Well, <laughs> do they see at all, or do they only have the third eye? Because we see with the third eye if we're psychic, and we also see with the mundane eye. So are they just have that third eye, but just quite attuned? Or do you think they have the physical eyes as well? Yeah. Like a Dalek or something. It, dep- it depends on what level of spirit we're talking. They don't, if they don't have a physical body, um, but they are, were in some way, shape, or form still from here, they will have remnants of the physicality that's here. So if you're talking about ghosties, so lower level energies, um, and some of the other earthbound energies like elementals, for example, then yes, they may have eyes depending on how they are configured but beyond that so so 
So lo we're talking kind of local spirits yeah. at that point. So if we take an example of a local spirit, right, because this is something that I've been a thinking about, I've been a pondering. Well, that's dangerous. There's a lot of corona. There's a lot of coronavirus going around at the moment in there, and luckily we've got you know vaccines and stuff for that now. So a lot of coronaviruses are going to be a dying. Little viruses are dying. Will they have ghosts, Chris? No. Or not? They won't have ghosts. So it's like viruses and single-celled organisms and stuff like that, they obviously have a spirit part because they cannot manifest it without having a spirit part. But do they have a sentence? Do they have a third eye? What's going on there? I would classify those as more of a Borg mind. Oh, like a hive yeah, mind. The hive mind situation where a group of of cellulars, singular cellulars together, make up one spirit. It may be split across a virus as it spreads. So the spirit would get bigger and bigger as the it took more hosts. Would that make sense? So the so the more it um takes over this physical world, then you say the more it yeah. evolves. Would you say you think they evolve spiritually? So the more people it inhabits and it kills, and that the more it spreads, the more it evolves. Do you think how long? How many people do you think it would have to infect in order to evolve into something that what we would consider to be have like a consciousness? Oh, I don't. But there is that number, know. and do you think it would think vary, it would vary, vary from, virus from virus to virus? Or virus. Thing? You've got to think with something like a. Uh, you know, with a lot of viruses as opposed to um, bacterial kind of virals. So you're going to be thinking there's mm -hmm. actually DNA and shit in there as opposed to, or at least RNA, if nothing else. So, you know, there is coding structure there. So it has the potential to hold a, phys a larger body, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, right. So I think we might have lost a couple More of people, likely. maybe at this point. So let's uh, rewind and reverse and uh, set things up again. So Hitchhiker's Guide to the Infinite. There's a couple of things that we can expand on that. One, the infinite is, I suppose, what you'd call the all. So past the physical world, we're talking all of the different spiritual realms and, um, you know, universes and dimensions know. and all that kind stuff of stuff the dimensions and stuff that we just do not fully understand hitchhikers well what do hitchhikers do they don't drive for themselves do they they ask something if they can yeah. catch a lift university gap year students that go off abroad and want to take the ayahuasca that's what we is talking about hitchhikers that's what i call them hitchhikers because what they're doing is they're trying to take these drugs and that to get to a higher spiritual plane, a higher spiritual level. But they're a hitchhiking with the ayahuasca yeah. spirit. They're not actually getting there themselves. Yeah. Now, we can come under fire sometimes from traditional witches and the like who say that we think that... Tradi um, hedge witches, sorry. We think that hedge witches are all about the getting high in the line. Well, some of them are. And that they cannot do it without taking the drugs. But that's not true. We don't actually think that. What we do think is that with the hedge witchery, it's not about a gardening and Kitchens. it's not about a stuff in the kitchen, like what the Instagrams and the memes and all that do Hashtag say. Insta witches. And the... Um, crappy youtube witches and the like that come out with these crappy books they end up in the works for a quid and even then no one buys them um it's a more about exploration i suppose and exploring these strange uh universes and different dimensions and the like whether you choose to use flying ointments and potions and that kind of thing or whether you choose to use just the pure psychic work from your mind and that and go into the astral traveling and go in your little vehicle, like in the chariot card in the Rider Waite deck. Yeah. Hashtag occult symbology. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you was a, if you was learning and you're wanting to explore, and you're a beginner witch, or beginning in the occult, where are the places that people? 
tend to kind of go to first, either accidentally or kind of aim to go for. Because I think the underworld's a popular one. Yeah. Uh, people want to see what happens when you die and that. So you've got the underworld, the astral world, Astral's of course. Astral's another big one. Got the astral world. Uh, less yeah. and less people go to the spaces within uh, planetary energies and things like that, but some of them do. And that. Ah, so you're talking tree of life now, aren't yes. you? Opening up and going to the, I can never say it's Hathera, the uh, spheres of the tree of life and such, and the little pathways yeah. in between, because technically you could open them up. What about uh, dipping into some rooms like Mary Poppins and she goes in those little chalk paintings on the side of the road, popping into a room like that? Do people do that nowadays? No, I, don't I don't think, think they, they do. do. I bet Will does, don't they? Oh, well, I bet Will does. does. Yeah. Uh, so let's start with the astral world then, because that's uh, basically the first route in it. People go from the start getting all this lucid dreaming and that and they start to think oh wait a minute i know i'm a dreaming let's uh, peel back this here curtain much like dorothy does in the wizard of oz or actually it's not dorothy it's that annoying little fucking dog toto in it <laughs> bloody little dog yeah dorothy did, gets the credit for that one but she didn't find that curtain the dog found that curtain the god dogs are a spirit guide in it the spirit guide that comes in the middle of the night when you're a dreaming you're having a nice dream, and the spirit guy pops up and says, you know you're dreaming, right? Well, come and have a look at this. And then they peel back this curtain, and then you walk through, and you're in the astral yeah. world. And you're like, my God, man, my whole life is a changed now. <laughs> Everything about how I see the universe and the like is a change. Well, there you find... Much like all of the celebrities and that, like Joe Rogan, who takes all the drugs and that, they go to some far-off strange place where they fill up part of the rest of the awe in the universe and that, and they think, I am such a small one. <laughs> and then they go back and they tell all their friends about it, and then they just do more and more drugs, but don't actually do any real magic. Yeah. I think I went off you on did a tangent a little bit. there, so you better take but it the, um But yeah, I think, I think what a lot of people struggle with is the difference between um, dreamscaping and actual astral travel. So I think some people kind of get into that part, just the other side of the veil, if they're lucky. Often, like you say, with help from, you know, guides or spirits that get involved in order to kind of entice them over there. But they kind of, you know, uh, ride the edge, don't they? They just kind of uh, go along the, the veil. Um, and very rarely are they actually stumbling straight into astral. They're kind of going to that limbo realm just between. Um, what's interesting is that when people get to the point where they're able to go and explore the astral, uh, and obviously, particularly when they don't have to use vehicles to get there, um, so the, the drugs that you're referring to as vehicles to get there, um, or, you know, plant allies or, or whatever else they might be using to persuade their way across. Um but I think that then starts to open all sorts of other opportunities for them that they wouldn't necessarily have seen otherwise. So, you know, I think it's an important part of of, of spellcrafting um, when you get to that point is it then allows you to make adjustments without needing the tools and things because you're able to pop onto the astral, make the change and then watch it filter down. So I suppose the next thing you should kind of explain or go off on a tangent on, Liam, is is that filtering down, that kind of, um, you know, myth bust a bit about this bloody vibrations bollocks that you often hear. Well, people in the New Age movement that, that I haven't got a fucking clue about much about magic in that, what they think of is they think about radio frequencies. Yeah. They think, well... Like an old-fashioned analogue, a radio or a television or something, then you adjust the dial and you go into different frequencies. And all these things are really all around you, but you have to lock onto a frequency and stuff like that. Well, you can tell 
that there's a new age or that says that kind of things because they have the kind of a new agey um, mind. The new agey mind is the more of the mind of the artist that gets a dragged about everywhere and never really contemplates structure. Yep. Completely the opposite to the mind of the engineer because the mind of the engineer thinks, how is this thing here? Physical reality, how is this thing? There must be some sort of big, giant mechanism. Yeah. The, the universe is a machine. So how the fuck does this universal machine thing work? There's different layers. I can get me old PC tower, yeah. and I can take the case off, and I can see a microchip and that, and I can see all these microchips that interact. Oh, look, there's a floppy disk. Hashtag floppy disk from back in the day. Chuck that, I don't need that anymore, you know. All this sort of stuff. It's all plugged in and then you go down deeper and you think, well, okay, there's a circuit board. What are on all of these circuit boards? What's that little thing that looks like a wood light? <gasps> it's a circuit board inside a circuit board that's so small I need a telescope microscope to <laughs> see it. Oh, what's this underneath yeah. that, right? We're used to that. That's the basics because that's physical world. But what goes past the physical parts of a computer? That's the uh, what people call other energies and that sort of thing. Is really the the software, the programming, that kind of thing. That's the stuff that goes beyond that. So if we think that Hitchhiker's Guide to the Infinite in this podcast episode is one of those things where we're going to take you. We're going to take you on a little journey. We're going to travel together. It's going to be like a ship coach trip with school <laughs> back in the day where you go to like Bygones Museum or some crap like that. Nowhere you really want to go, but somewhere which is approved to take school. So it's got to be some bullshit museum, hasn't it? We're going to go on a little trip, everyone, podcast listeners and fans. Should we take him on a trip, Chris? I've got nothing better to do. Into the astral world. Into the astral world. we got 45 minutes or so. We can get... <laughs> we'll see how far we can get before it kicks into the extended edition and the Patreon and that. So, in our... What we're talking to you now is your conscious mind. Your kind of personality, okay? That is in your physical body and in your brain and stuff like that. Now, uh, it's a very uncomfortable for some, the experiment with this, because if we uh, get some, like, uh, I don't know, tweezers and stuff and poke about with your brain, we can, in fact, change your personality. It's very uncomfortable for a lot of people because they don't like the idea of the fact that they are essentially a machine and that we can turn them into Mr. Hyde by <laughs> changing a exactly. few things in the body. They think, oh, but I've had an outer body experience. I went off and I am still the same a personality. So how can it be the fact that it's the body that is changing all these things when I am out of my body? Well, that's a great mystery and one that we're not going to talk to you until it's the Patreon time <laughs> because well, you've got to pay us. You've got to pay us for this information. But just go with it, right? So, what we're talking about now is if you think about this physical world and how your personality, your consciousness is is exploring this physical world. If you peel back the layer of the physical world. Really, you're peeling back a layer of the brain and the mind. So it goes more into the unconscious, the unconscious. So this is where you do this is that. where you do that brilliant iPhone one. I like that analogy. Yeah. OK, so if you if, if your physical body, your physical body, right, is your iPhone, the iOS, the operating system, yeah, is your conscious mind. And technically part of your unconscious mind just goes in layers. Maybe your conscious mind is the, you know, the top layer of coding. And your unconscious mind is the, uh, you know, the ones and zeros, the binary, that kind of thing. I know we'll have lost some people at this point because some people don't like tech and that, (laughs) do they? But outside of your iPhone, because what people don't understand is that all of your, uh, all of your emails, they're in the cloud, Aren't they, Chris? In the They're in the cloud. And people, my nan, Auntie Beryl, and my nan, they look at their phones and they say, well, my email's on my phone. 
and I say, well, your email's on your phone because it's downloaded on your phone, but it's also in the cloud. And I can pick up my iPhone, my conscious body, and I can tap in if I know the code or just brute force attack my way in, which is more my <laughs> cup of tea. Um, I can read your emails. Yeah. But but how do you do that? How do you do that? I said, I go through the cloud. I'm in the cloud as well. Yeah. So what is this cloud? What is this cloud? Well, that's something that we're going to delve into. So let's get start going and peeling back the layers and get into this cloud. So if uh, if you are currently in your, your physical body, your conscious mind, when we go into a dream state, we are starting to bridge to the unconscious, which is still part of your mind, but it's just that little step further. Get into the next stage. What you need to do is you need to combine your conscious mind and your unconscious mind so that they're on the same page and apply a certain amount of energy to manifest somewhere else beyond that. So it's kind of like on a hitchhike. When we used to go on those really crappy uh, school trips and that, what we'd have to do is go in our coach, which is our physical body and our conscious mind. We'd have to pick up the stragglers from the upper fucking school down the road that were too cheap dire their own fucking coach group of five or six people and teachers and that we had the school with the money there was a poor school down the road we used to let them come on our coach trips right so we were picking up the straggler which is the unconscious mind so we were coming along and bringing that don't shake your head chris this is genuine golden nugget <laughs> shit right you can tell it's golden nugget shit because it, it kind of makes sense, but don't really make sense. And people won't be able to retell this afterwards. They won't be able to tell someone else. Say, so what's that podcast about? That's so I don't fucking know. But it was good. <laughs> so anyway, so we want to get to the astral world because that's the next step on our journey. Now, you are in the astral world because it's another layer you say everyone else is also in the astral world bitches you don't own the astral world you might own a part of it but you don't own all of it okay now in order to get to that astral world in order to astrally project because that's what a lot of people want to know how do you astrally project your astral body is already there in that world because you're already part of it it is already a part of you it's already there what isn't there is your conscious mind so what you're trying to do is you're trying to transfer your consciousness, your conscious mind, your personality stuff, in, in, out of your physical body and into your astral body. That transfer is what people are struggle with, don't they? Yeah, they, so like I said, when they're dreamscaping, they often has the appearance of that's what's happening. So people are kind of like, well, I'm switching from here to there. Well, that's what you're doing with collective subconscious. So what you're capable of doing during dreamscaping is manipulate in some ways what is available to you and your subconscious, but also uh, the collective subconscious, what's available to a certain extent in the cloud, locally speaking, with other people that you've connected with, are available for that dreamscape to do. What they then struggle with is then fully manifesting on the astral. So in order to do that, to fully cross over into uh, your astral body. So that's actually taking your your energetic body, one of your energetic parts of your energetic bodies, out of your exi out of your physicality and into into the, ast the your astral body. There's a many secrets that people think is a secret and they're not. They're actually just bullshit gurus that are giving you a load of false information and bullshit and selling courses and stuff like that. If you want to give your money to a guru, join the Thoth Witchcraft Patreon and give your money to us because we'll do better things with it. OK, now. You'll read about trying, you know, techniques and stuff in order to get yourself to astrally project. So there's that kind of thing where imagine, you know, lie down on a night time. Imagine there's a rope coming out of your body and pull on it and pull on it. And then all of a sudden you're afloating above the bed type thing. Or there's, or there's a, that one. Okay, get a couple of crystals one about walking. and pop them about it's the room. The one going up a stairway. Yeah, walking, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of you out there have tried that and probably come to the conclusion that it doesn't work and therefore either you're not a witch, not magic, don't have the ability to do it or it's all a load of bullshit. Well, neither of those are true. It is, well, maybe the bullshit part is. I mean, it does work for some people, but 
a majority of time when we think astral projection, there aren't any necessarily cookie cutter things that everyone can follow that will do the exact same thing. So much like when we teach spell casting, we don't teach everyone the same spells and the same ingredients. What we teach is the formulas and the principles behind it. And that's what we're going to share now. So it's going to take energy to get you there. Stop thinking about you and your astral body and your personality coming out of your physical body. Think of it as a transfer from your personal, you know, your physical body, your consciousness being in your physical body to another body that is also part of your body. Part of your body. Okay, part of your body. When people awake out of comas, Chris, they can't feel their arms and legs, can they? No. They go through that kind of thing called uh, physiotherapy yeah, and that. Yeah, to remind them how to use things and connect with their body, physical body. Yeah. They can't move their arms and legs necessarily. Like go Reni Shee and uh, Kill Bill and all of that sort of thing. When she was uh, fantasizing about a killing O Reni Shee, she has said, "Wiggle your big toe, <laughs> wiggle your big toe." Kill Bill's one of my favourite films. That's why I'm referencing that. So, um, basically, you've got to think of it like that. There is a part of you, which is your astral body, that is connected to you, but you can't really feel it. Okay. Now, what you can do is what a doctors do and such. They get a pin and they sort of poke in you in different places and saying, can you feel that? Can you feel that? Can you feel that? But what it takes is it takes a little bit of energy and it takes the repetitive motions and repetitive process. So like with physiotherapy, Chris, you kind of get the physiotherapist and they kind of start moving your arms and moving your legs. And eventually you do start to feel, don't you? Yeah, exactly. And then you can start to start to move. Now, the problem is, is that when people try to teach and explain, well, how does astral projection work? It's a lot like teaching someone, well, how do you move? How do I pick up this glass? Yeah. How do I literally, if you've got something in front of you guys that are listening, pick it up. And then think, how would you explain to someone how you pick that up? You just kind of did it. Your body responds to those commands now you can teach someone to do that because we teach babies to do that not baby witches i mean actual yeah. babies how to walk and stuff like that the process is very similar now there's a little thing like shock treatment you know when you're trying to wake someone up because they've uh, gone into cardiac arrest and stuff and they put little paddles on and they go boom and yeah. jolt you I like to use methods like that sometimes, because if you're sending energy to the astral body and that astral body is connected to you, it'll f you'll start to feel it. Depending on how much energy is applied to it, you will start to feel it. So, because what you're doing is you're sensing energy and you're sensing another body that you're transferring consciousness in, it's difficult. Some people will be able to feel parts of that anyway. So like when we're talking about magic and stuff like that, we're actually talking about a lot of the time, higher level curses and stuff like that, puppet dolls, they all connect to that astral body. So if someone or something is affect affecting that astral body, you should be able to feel it somehow. Yeah. Um, not everyone has the same sensitivity though, of course, no. do they, Chris? And that's so. kind of what we try to push people to expand as off as quickly as possible really because how are you supposed to know when someone is working against you or an entity is arriving from a certain direction and um, they're not going to necessarily do it on a phys on the physical plane they're going to do it on spiritual ones in which case because that's where they're moving and that's where they exist so therefore if you are unaware of what is going on out in your uh, spiritual bodies you're then starting to think, OK, well, how am I supposed to, one, protect myself um, and two, know that you've you've that is clean, too. Like, I think that's the one that bothers me most is that's where all that negative crap sticks to it, like, you know, chewing gum on, on your shoe. How, if you don't notice that that's happening, it's already filtering down to your physical body before you're aware of what's going on in your energetic yeah. ones. And I think that's the kind of main reason we, we like people to expand into that as often as possible when they are learning from the beginning. Yeah. 
So we're basically out of time for the regular podcast. Now we're going to go into overtime and really delve further into this. And we might even at some point even go past the astral world for the Patreon. So goodbye, regular listeners.